ओम ज्ञान चिमगंध से ज्ञानंजन शलाकया चक्षुर मिलित तस्म श्री गुरव नम So first of all let's read out the translation and then we can understand what we're singing Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu jive daya kari shapar shad shiya dham shah avatar Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Shri Krishna Chaitanya who is the supreme personality of Godhead being merciful to the conditioned souls has descended along with his personal associates and with his holy dham shri navadi dham atantar durlabha prema kari bare dan shikai sharanagati bhakatera pran that extremely rare love of god to give that he teaches the process of sharanagati the process of taking shelter of krishna which is the very life of the devotees so that uh, process is in six parts doina atane vedan doina the first is doina which means an attitude of humility atmane vedan uh, giving oneself offering oneself gopritt vevaron the attitude of considering that krishna is my protector अवश्य रखी बे कृष्ण विशास पालन दैट द एटीट्यूड ऑफ कंसीडर द फेथ दैट सडनली कृष्ण विल प्रोटेक्ट मी गो टू टेबल ऑन अवश्य रखी बे कृष्ण विशास पालन दिस टू थिंग्स सिमिलर दैट कृष्ण इज प्रोटेक्टिंग मी एंड कृष्ण इज मेंटेनिंग मी भक्ति अनुकूल मात्र कार्य शिखा टू एक्सेप्ट ओनली दोस एक्टिविटीज that those which are conducive to advancement in devotional service and bhakti prati kul bhav varjan angika and rejecting any activities which are detrimental to advancement in devotional service sharanga sharanagati hoi bejaha taha prarthana shune shri nanda kumar shri nanda kumar krishna who is the son of Nanda Maharaj he hears the prayers of those who are surrendered to Krishna in these six ways Rupa Sanatan Pade Dante Trina Kori Bhakati Vinoda Pare Duhum Pada Dhari Bhakti you know, Nathaka states that he is taking grass between his trees this is a an attitude of humility we don't see this i've never seen this in all my travels in india all these years but it seems that it was quite common at the time of chaitanya mahaprabhu we often hear this description taking straw in my teeth bhaktivinod says i fall at the lotus feet or i i yeah i take hold of the two lotus feet of rupa and sanatan कांदिया कांदिया बोले आमी तो अधम शिकाये शरणागति करो हे उतम crying and crying i he says i am most fallen and low but by teaching this sharanagati make me or bring me to the highest standard of devotional service so let's sing it very famous instruction of lord krishna in bhagavad gita which shrila prabhupad our spiritual master quoted more than any other verse is who knows what's the verse that shrila prabhupad quoted the most any suggestions saradhaman parityajja mame kam sharanam braja aham twang sarva pape bhyo moksha ishami ma shuchaha abandon all varieties of religion lord krishna says and just surrender to me i will deliver you from all sinful reactions do not fear so the ultimate instruction of the bhagavad gita is surrender to krishna surrender to god take shelter of him now what does that mean that 
taking shelter has six aspects which are described in this song by Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur and Bhaktivinoda Thakur states that Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who is the incarnation of Krishna who came to this world 500 years ago came to teach this process of how to take shelter of Krishna out of mercy upon the fallen souls in this material world Krishna came himself as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu he descended into or with his holy dham or his holy place that is Navari Dham, which according to our vision is manifested in West Bengal in India. And he came with his associates, all great pure devotees. He descended from the spiritual world. And what did he get? He came to give something to us. What did he come to give? Generally people pray to God, give me money, wealth, women all these facilities. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu teaching us to pray said, na dhanam, na janam, na sundarim. I don't want any of these things. He prayed for pure devotion to Krishna. And what standard of pure devotion? There is the love of God is talked about or realized in various religious processes of the world. But the kind of devotion that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu distributed that is Atyanta Durlabha Prema it's very rare not ordinarily achieved love of Krishna there are various levels of love in this material world love means lust what is called love is actually lust just like we find that young men fall in love with young women they don't fall in love with old women with lots of wrinkles on their faces because they are attracted to the body they're not they say I love you for what you are but actually they love for the arrangement of the skin so that is not actual love actual love is loving a person for what they are but everyone in this material world is not actually lovable for what they are because everyone is in illusion and everyone is simply trying to uh, get whatever they can from everyone else either directly or indirectly so real love is centered on the actual object of love who is Krishna the supreme personality of Godhead but even within love of Krishna there are various levels or levels of love which means that even though all love for Krishna spiritual love that is pure love but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu he came to teach the process by which the highest love of Krishna can be attained that is particularly the love of Krishna which was shown by the residents of Vrindavan and especially the gopis of Vrindavan this is a very high topic and it's not possible to discuss that in detail here what's being discussed is that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave this opportunity to develop the highest level of love of Krishna how is that? by teaching the process of Sharanagati taking shelter of Krishna and this process is the very life of the devotees now love we may think that love is not mechanical that's true pure love doesn't follow any rules but there are various rules or processes by which we can come from the present standard or the present position that we're in in which we are illusioned thinking of ourselves in terms of the uh, body in which we are presently situated instead of understanding that we are by nature pure spirit souls we think of ourselves as the particular body that we, in, that we are now in for a very short blip in time living in this very small insignificant city in this very small insignificant country called the United States of America 
in this very small insignificant planet in this very small insignificant universe in one blip of time and we're thinking I am very important this is called maya or illusion so reality is to understand our eternal relationship with Krishna the supreme personality of Godhead but to become free from the illusion of identifying myself with the immediate surroundings that we are in it is necessary to follow a spiritual process this is called bhakti yoga or the yoga the the system of linking with krishna by practicing devotion and that devotion the practice of devotion when it becomes perfect then the result is pure devotion the means and the end are the same or similar so what is to be practiced what is at present uh, we are living in an atmosphere in which everyone is basically interested in ahamma meti i me and mine what's in it for me everyone is thinking what's in it for me what is what is in my own self interest but pure devotion to krishna there are six aspects of taking shelter of krishna what does it mean to take shelter of krishna we can't take shelter of krishna unless we're willing to give ourselves to him if we declare independence then we are not sheltered shelter means to come under the control just like we see a dog comes under the control of the dog's master so the dog takes shelter of the master with the faith that the master if i wag my tail and lick the master's leg then the master will be happy with me and will throw me some food and then my interest will be served so actually one of this song, this is this song which we just sung is the first of many songs in this sharanagati and one of them is in which bhakti no thakur the author of these songs is proposing to become just like the dog of krishna it's a it's an analogy that he gives so the uh, six attitudes in taking shelter of krishna what does it mean to love god we may talk of love of god but what does it actually mean is it is it some vague sentiment or is it something that i feel today and tomorrow i may not feel it or i feel it when i come to the temple but then we have to go back to real life and work hard and make lots of money what is the meaning of taking shelter of krishna so uh, bhakti no thakur he's uh, in this song which we just sung it's in bengali and he's explaining the verse uh, a sanskrit verse in which the six symptoms or the six characteristics of one who has taken shelter of krishna are described and actually in the sanskrit verse the last point is given karpanya of feeling oneself uh, as very fallen but bhakti no thakur has listed it first as being the essential feature of humility one cannot take shelter of someone unless he's convinced that this person is much superior to me and that i uh, i'm not capable of sheltering myself the uh what is that the rugged individual the the guy in the malbara advert he doesn't take shelter of anyone he's he's on his own he's he's tough he's strong and of course that guy got cancer eventually and uh, so he was tough and strong apparently for some time but then like everyone else he had to die and take birth again maybe as a cactus in the desert or something like that we don't know somewhere so taking shelter means uh, to feel i am helpless in modern society is just the this the antithetical mode of that is being inculcated everyone is supposed to feel i'm very strong 
I'm, I can, I'm tough, I can do it, I can do it by myself. Everyone's supposed to get the Rambo attitude. But reality is that we are very small, we are very weak, however strong our body may be, however many nuclear missiles our government may have, we are all subject to death. And we don't know where we're going next. So recognizing that we are not the controller, we are controlled. We take shelter of the controller in great humility. Of course, that's only a beginning understanding of God as the controller of the universe. So humility, I, I'll just go through this quickly because to go through in depth would take a very long time. There are many, This, as I say, this is the first of these songs in a very long series of songs by Bhaktivinoda Thakur and it's very helpful for our spiritual development to sing these songs or at least read them because Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur is a pure devotee of Krishna. He is mentioned here that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has descended to this world with his, with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's own associate. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur is one of those great devotees of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who has come to this world and by his own personal behavior shown what it means to be a devotee of Krishna. And especially Bhaktivinoda Thakur's example is very relevant for most people in this world who are married and have families because Bhaktivinoda Thakur was married and had a family and had great responsibility in the government, that was the British government at the time there, and had 13 children, which is considered a, a lot now. It's not considered a lot, it's just no one has 13 children. It's, but uh, that was normal in the days before artificial contraception became uh, popular. So he had many children, which means a lot of responsibility, as every parent knows. One child's a lot of responsibility. Uh, so having many is more responsibility. But at the same time, he was, uh, while performing his uh, worldly activities, he was fully absorbed in love of Krishna and service to Krishna. And one of, one of the many uh, contributions he made to devotional society is writing all these many songs which give us so much instruction. It's not just instruction, do this, do that. But he's writing it in an autobiographical way, as if he's one of us. At the end of the song, he says, Kandia, Kandia, Bole, Bole. Crying and crying, I say that uh, Amito Adham, I am very fallen. So he takes this mood, although he's actually a great pure devotee, but he takes this mood that I am very fallen. So this is very helpful for us, or those of us who may be very fallen, that we can identify with this. And Bhaktivinoda Thakur gives us the hope that uh, whatever situation we may be in this in in this world, if we take to this process of surrendering to Krishna by the process of devotional service, we can gradually become purified and come to the standard of pure devotional service to Krishna. So there are many songs, and from time to time we can read them, or even daily if we read one of these songs, it will be a very, very helpful meditation and instruction for us and inspiration and very beautifully expressed also because one of the characteristics of a pure devotee of Krishna is that he's very poetic poetry, real poetry means glorification of Krishna and it springs automatically from the heart of someone who is full with love of Krishna so Bhaktivinoda Thakur is a great poet and we can appreciate his poetry of course he wrote mostly in Bengali which most of you won't understand the translations are there but uh, I think you could uh, it was a bit difficult for most to sing this was it? it seemed like that but if we practice singing then we can also appreciate the, the, even if we don't understand the words of the language the, the beauty of the sound just the sound of it is, is very pleasing to the heart because these are spiritual sounds so uh, humility this is required and Atmanivedan, that means offering oneself, giving oneself. In the Sanskrit verse, the word is 
it's almost the same word amanikshepa which means literally throwing oneself that means with no reservations whatsoever just like if you if you meet someone a, a very a, a very uh, close friend who you didn't see for a long time you, you run and clasp them so it's just throwing yourself without any reservation so if one has complete faith that Krishna is protecting me and Krishna is maintaining me uh, which is the, ne the next two uh, symptoms which are there which are given then if one has this faith then one can fully th throw oneself without any reservations as long as we're thinking that my friends, my family, my country they will protect me or I have any real or significant relationship with them we can't fully give ourselves to Krishna as long as we're thinking that I have something in this world to enjoy or I, there's something in this world of value to me then we can't fully give ourselves to Krishna now Bhaktivinoda Thakur as I was saying was a, a pure devotee of Krishna who discharged his worldly responsibilities but at the same time at the same time he he practiced detachment from them by now may I, we may ask how is that possible or why is it necessary to do that well it's necessary for for those who are married to maintain their families so he did that he didn't neglect that worldly responsibility but at the same time his internal attitude was that my real life is with Krishna everything in this world is temporary just like we we may see the foam on the waves it's the, the foam on top of the wave is seen and then it's gone so just like that there are many examples given of the temporary nature of this material world kamala dala jala jivana talamala water on a lotus leaf it drops but it, will, it may stay for a few seconds and then again it falls down so like that our life it just here and gone very, life is very brief but in this short human life if we can develop this attitude of full surrender to Krishna then we will no longer have to take birth again in this material world and we will go to live with Krishna eternally in the spiritual world so uh, four symptoms are mentioned uh, two of them uh, have the faith that Krishna will maintain me and Krishna will protect me in this material world uh, most of our activities are for maintenance and protection where to get food, clothing, shelter, shelter in the here. I'm not talking about shelter of Krishna, but having a having a house to, or some place to live in. So most of our activities are for the sake of food, clothing, shelter. But a pure devotee of Krishna has the faith that Krishna is maintaining me. Krishna is protecting me. And these are the, the next two are very important in our practical lives the the uh, the four symptoms that have been mentioned up to now they they describe the attitude of a devotee but the next two are how he practically lives in this world bhakti anukul matro karja shika i will accept only those activities which are favorable for cultivation of devotional service and bhakti prati kul bhav Borjanangika and I will <coughs> or, or the uh, resolve to uh, reject all activities which are detrimental to developing pure devotional service now under these two categories vidhi nished that which should be done and that which should not be done there are many rules given in the scriptures one should if one is in, if one is serious about spiritual life one should rise early in the morning and chant the names of krishna but you know Thakur wrote several songs just on that principle of rising early in the morning and chanting the names of krishna vibhavari shesha aloka pravesh what's the next line Nidra Chari. Nidra Chari 
utho jiva bolo hari hari so he says that the, the the moon has now finished his course in the sky the light is just entering give up sleep o oh, o oh jiva and get up and get up and do what chant the names of krishna so these are things that should be done one should chant the names of krishna one should resolve to take only that food which is offered to krishna there are many rules given in the uh, bhakti rasamrita sindhu the book which is the ocean of the nectarian mellows of of devotional service to krishna this describes all these rules and then what should be done one should chant the name of krishna one should associate with devotees one should take food offered to krishna smell the flowers offered to krishna we can smell i can smell right now it's flowers offered to krishna it's a very beautiful smell that that's the uh, there's one gardenia two gardenias it's so strong smell very nice offered to krishna smell the uh, incense which is offered to krishna so these are all very pleasing activities it's not something nasty we're not asking people to flog themselves in the street as is done by some religionists but to smell the flowers offered to krishna so it's a very nice process because krishna is very nice and that's why we want to take shelter of him it's not it's not a horrific process it's a very sweet process because krishna is very sweet but there are some activities that are to be given up also if one is serious about developing love of god one cannot get love of god for instance from watching soap operas on tv or football games on tv so if one is serious about developing love of god one doesn't do these things in fact it's a very good idea not to have a tv at all and even if one's not serious about love of god if one just wants to be sane uh, it's a good idea sane in a materialistic way which is not very sane but it's a good idea not to have a tv and get the consciousness filled up with uh, how many channels they have on the cables now 700 800 unlimited 700 varieties of garbage which you can fill up your gray matter with and gray matter will become black from all the all the nonsense so uh, act, uh, if one is to develop love of god it one has to be very serious it's not a it's not a part time activity or a or hobby or a or a once a week for one hour activity or a uh, two or three times a year or whenever there's a funeral or a marriage activity developing love of krishna is uh, is a very serious matter to become free from the illusion of thinking that i am this body and to develop pure love for krishna is described here as atyanta durlabha extremely rare to get chaitanya mahaprabhu is giving the process by which we can develop that but we have to take to the process we can't take to it half heartedly or quarter heartedly or even three quarter heartedly but one has to take to it whole heartedly otherwise the result will be that we might get uh, some increment of attachment to krishna but we will have we will remain attached to this material world as much as we do not become attached to krishna so we have to practice becoming attached to krishna by the process given by uh, great acharyas such as rupa goswami the great teachers and that includes uh, giving up activities which are not favorable to devotional service so there are many and i won't get into them now because uh, if we say all of them probably people will start to leave the temple it's they might find it a bit extreme but then well it is extreme <laughs> it, to want to get out of this material world from the materialistic perspective it is extreme but the materialistic perspective is one of remaining within the cycle of birth and death the materialistic perspective is one which will cause us to take 
extremely unpleasant situations again and again in this material world. So it's actually just sensible to want to come out of this material existence, but one has to make a determined effort. Now, Bhakti Yenob Thakur states that for one who is serious about Krishna consciousness in this way, his prayer will be heard by Krishna. So Krishna hears everything. Mostly people pray to him for material benefits. Even now, if one goes to Tirupati in Andhra Pradesh, in India, there'll be hundreds and thousands of people every day of the year. What Now it's 5.47, yeah, yeah, it's, it's early in the morning there. So there'll be hundreds and thousands of people lining up to go to that temple. And they have a computer regulated system for entering the temple. Because instead of queuing up for 12 hours or 14 hours to enter the temple, you get a band which you put on your arm and you have a fixed time to go, which saves you... The, it used to be that people would stand in line for 12 hours, 24 hours, but now it's computerized and literally hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people go there daily to visit that temple. That's one temple. That's the most visited temple in India. And of course in various traditions also in Makkah at the time of Eid in Ramadan, at the end of Ramadan. How many people go? Any idea? It must be seven, several hundred thousand at least. A few million probably. They go so... Many people are praying to God, but, and he's, He hears everything. Even if we don't go to the temple, or even if we don't go to a holy place, He hears everything. He sees everything. So He hears everyone's prayer, but of course, we can't expect that He's that much, He's a person also. We can't expect that He's that much not, not that he's a person also, he is the supreme person. <laughs> and we can't expect that he's that many people are coming and praying, give me this, give me that. I, I visited so many doctors, I still couldn't get my backache out. Can you do, give me a quick fix. In Chennai, there's uh, the temple of Ganesh, which is known as Visa Ganesh, because he's famous for granting visas to America. <laughs> which are not very... Yeah. He's called Visa Ganesh. That's the, that's the name of the deity. It must work. Otherwise, how did he get that name? Maybe the Pujari is bribing the American consulate. Well, I'd better not say that because I could get stuck away in prison for insulting the government of the United States of America. Anyway, I'm leaving tomorrow, so I hope they don't arrest me before that. So anyway, he's hearing and he's saying, okay, 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 okay. Uh, you know, I, I want to marry a pretty girl. Okay, okay. I, I want to pass my exam. That's a big one. Before the exams, there's a big crowd in the temples. Okay, okay, okay. And someone comes, I don't want anything. I only want love for you. Oh, really? Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you very much. <laughs> you can imagine. It, it's just, if someone's coming all the time... Give me this, give me that. Okay, okay. And someone comes. And, yes, I just want to say, you're so wonderful. I just want to serve you. Oh, and he's very happy. Krishna becomes very happy. So people are approaching him for materialistic reasons. But those who approach him simply, can I serve you? What for? What do you want? No, I just want to serve you because I love you. You love me? Oh, that's very nice. Then he will give himself. Holding the two lotus feet of uh, Rupa and Sanatan, Bhakti Yenod Thakur approaches them very humbly with grass in his mouth. These are the two original teachers of the process of Sharanagati. Rupa Goswami wrote the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. The, giving the process by which we can attain pure devotional service. And Sanatana Goswami, uh, he compiled the Hari Bhakti Vilas, another book of procedures, and also Brihad Bhagavatamrita, which describes the journey of the soul 
from the material world to going back home, back to Godhead, to the spiritual world and how the soul enters the spiritual world and Krishna himself embraces that soul. So, Bhaktivinoda Thakur falls at their feet and crying says that I am very fallen but by teaching me the process of Sharanagati, the process of taking shelter of Krishna, lift me up to the highest level. So we all have hope. However fallen we may be, and it seems that uh, in the present Kali Yuga or the age of quarrel and hypocrisy, the, the how fallen society can be, it's getting more and more decadent in all ways, but whatever our background may be, if we simply resolve to take to this process of devotional service to Krishna, which begins with the very simple method of chanting the names of Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And all through the process, is one of chanting Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So if we do that and we follow the prescribed method this is very important if we follow the method of performing activities which are favorable to devotional service giving up those activities which block our progress in devotional service uh, if we do that, then we will get the actual result of chanting, which is love of Krishna. Now, we like generally we like to hear about love of Krishna and very high level, and it's very nice to hear about. But apart from hearing about it, we actually have to practically apply ourselves to this process, and then instead of just hearing about it, we can advance toward the platform in which we can actually enter into that or rather by which we are given the mercy by which we are allowed to enter to into the platform of pure love of Krishna. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur has given us uh, many directions in these songs. Uh, we can read them and take the mercy of Bhaktivinoda Thakur. And of course, uh, Srila Prabhupada has throughout his books only taught this. He has not taught anything else but how to take shelter of Krishna and attain pure love of Krishna. And I don't have much time left. I'd like to speak much more about this, but I'll finish here now. And if there are any questions, uh, if anyone would like to ask, please ask. Of course, this discussion of topics of Krishna, it's not just now, but it's going on daily in this temple. That is the purpose of this temple. The people can come and see the beautiful forms of Krishna, smell the flowers offered to Krishna, take the prasad offered to Krishna. And very importantly, those who are very serious about serving Krishna and developing love of Krishna, they will hear the topics of Krishna that are described daily, morning and evening in this temple. So Hare Krishna. If there are any questions, please ask.